My, my next question was about the, the many predictions we read in the, particularly the earlier Gospels, the Matthew, Mark and Luke, of Jesus' uh, death and resurrection. And almost at random, there's a, a very uh, clear example in Luke chapter 8, verses 31, where Jesus says, you know, he tells his disciples that everything written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. he will be handed over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and insult him and spat on him. Uh, then they'll flog him. And after they've killed him on the third day, he will rise again. And, it's, and this is one example and some very, sometimes very detailed predictions. And, and But the question is... Um, in terms of uh, d the astonishment that is then shown by the disciples, the very same people in Luke 24, when the women come back from the tomb, they say, look, he's not there, he's risen. And Peter, uh, I forget the Greek word, but seems to be saying, you don't talk nonsense. You're talking nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, did the historical Jesus, my question is, this, did the historical Jesus, therefore, really, I mean, supernaturalist issues apart, because you can still predict your death and, you know, just be human, if you like. You don't have to have supernatural knowledge. Did, did Jesus really predict his death and resurrection? Or is this a, a retrospectively inserted idea put in the Gospels to tidy up a narrative which otherwise would be a bit unprovidential, shall we say? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly the issue. And it's, um, I think, you, usually scholars look at the specificity of those predictions and, and say, you know, this really, you know, if, if you... If you're pretty sure that early Christians are telling stories about Jesus and sometimes changing stories and sometimes changing the way he says things and sometimes putting words on his lips, which Christians definitely were putting words on his lips. And we have gospels from early Christianity where Jesus says all sorts of things that nobody thinks he really said. I mean, Christians aren't yeah. doing this. And yeah. so the question is, which things are they putting on his lips? This is one of the first things to go, I think, from the gospel because the specificity of this and especially predicting his own resurrection, I think think is a clear indication that this is something that's later put on his lips. It does create this delicious irony, though, that um, you first get it, you actually get it first in Mark, of course, the first gospel, where Jesus makes three explicit passion predictions, yep. and the disciples simply don't get it. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of that not getting it stuff gets um, gets mitigated a bit in Matthew and in Luke, but there are elements of it still remaining where they just don't, you know, they, they're not expecting the resurrection, even though Jesus is spending his, in, in Luke, he makes four of these predictions. <laughs> and, and then he's, they still think that the women are crazy, because what are you talking about? <laughs> and the reader, of course, is saying, yeah, well, he's been saying it all along. But so, so the, the, um, just to clarify, the reason that you, people are historians are skeptical is not because of some alleged anti-supernaturalist liberal bias. It's because no. the story doesn't make sense. Uh, and so it looks as if, you know, they may have been tampering with the story. Is that is that a fair assessment? I'd say it's I say it's a combination of things. I think it's that you, you, we we know look, we know that the Christians are putting things on Jesus' lips. There are things that Christians want that want would like Jesus to say. Mm -hmm. We know we've got these very, very specific predictions. You can imagine Jesus knowing that his time is up and saying, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm going to be arrested and killed. But yeah. when you look at what's specifically and then and then you're right, the story doesn't the whole story doesn't make sense anymore then. Uh, because mm -hmm. He keeps telling the disciples this, and you know, either they were idiots or they weren't listening, or somebody's like, you know, making or, or, or Luke, Luke says, and not just Luke, says, uh, oh, the, the, their understanding, they were kept from understanding, as if Jesus told them this, and then they, they were prevented yeah. by God or someone from understanding. Well, what was the whole point of them telling them in the first place? Are they going to have the understanding <laughs> taken away from them? It, it, it seems <laughs> right. I've right. uh, never quite understood that. But,